And who better to speak on this than a former president of the institution? Dr. Mohammed Karim is an electrical engineer by trade. He's a scientist, a provost, and executive vice chancellor of the University of Massachusetts. His major research interests focus on electro-optical systems, optical compacting, and pattern recognition. And he has served as the president of NABI and is currently on the Board of Regents. In the past, he has served on boards of Virginia Coalition for Community and Justice, the Center for Christian and Jewish and Muslim Understanding in New York, and he's on countless boards. And what better person who is so active and engaged in the community to tell us more about why Bangladesh than Dr. Mohammed Karim himself? Now, remember we were reminded 
where the puck is and where the puck is going to be. Now, I didn't uh, practice this with Dr. Karanam. I'm going to tell you where it began from. It actually all began from masala, spice. And I'm telling you, spice is an important ingredient that is the masala is actually the thing that is driving the whole world, as far as I'm concerned. And seventh slide, I'm going to establish this fact. And if you want an elaboration, you invite me. I give you a two-hour lecture just to tell you why masala is the start of everything. Now, it's pepper, cinnamon, cardamom, saffron, perfumes. These are all from Indian subcontinent and China. And they are in high demand in Europe. High demand. Anytime people want to import this from those land, in the middle were Italians and the Turks, and they will put tax and tax over tax and tariffs, so people wanted to find shortcut to Indian subcontinent. So in the year 1600, the world's first company was formed. It was actually formed on the last day of the year 1600, 31st December of 1600. So my story starts from there. Now, what I want to tell you this is 1606, five years later, guess what happens? I'm not talking now about East, uh, East India Company. King James gave two companies. One company is where I live right now. It's called Plymouth County, where I live. And there's a London company. By the way, there's another company where I used to live. It's called Virginia Company. There are three companies were built in America. But these two companies are very important. Anyways, I came from a big fundraising. You start with companies, but I need to tell you because everything begins with the sun. So, East India Company, in 1601, they actually tried in Sumatra and Aceh. You know where the Aceh was? Aceh Island? In, after 20 years of trying, they were thrown out by the Dutch companies. And then, there was an emperor called Emperor Jahangir. And in 1612, East India Company that failed in Aceh, because they defeated the Portuguese in the Battle of Suwali, were given concession to do trade in India. If that didn't happen, this masala wouldn't have worked. But let me tell you, 1612, Emperor Jahangir gave a concession. And the concession means this. In 1757, I am an engineer, but I'm actually a history buff. Do you know what happened in 1757? Anybody? Palasi. Palasi. Okay, fine. On September 5th, 1757, all the red spots in America are those companies under England. And those companies happen to be, I just told you, Plymouth Company, Virginia Company, London Company. And remember, on this side, many 12 hours away, East India Company is in charge of the red dot. Did you understand that? That's 1757. This company, these two, three companies coming out of England are running empires on both sides. With that being said, there was something called Boston Tea Party. I'm making very quick. Do you know what this tea party was about? Anyone? What was happening? Tea chests were, oh God, do you know where the tea came from? No, I'm from Sylvester. I'm not going there. It could be Sylvester or Sri Lanka. But I can tell you, America's independence was caused by my tea. Did you understand that? It is my tea. That was diverted by East India Company. Unloaded in Boston Harbor. That caused a revolution, right? That was a Boston Tea Party. So let me tell you, I'm going a little bit. Part of what is called United States today, then, and what is known in Bangladesh, were one country for 26 years. Next time, you just got to invite me for a two-hour lecture. I will repeat this, but all I'm just telling you, the puck where it is, and the puck where it will be, well, actually, what? 26 years. Now, I know this is new 
information for you. So let me tell you, let's talk about Manhattan now. Now I just picked up this map from Manhattan last night, of course. I pointed a place in Manhattan. Uh, this is called, what is it called? Anybody? Garment District. Is a garment actually made in Manhattan? Is it? But remember, that place is called Garment District still today. Now, remember, this is how the Garment District used to look like in lower Manhattan. It's not too far away. And today, if you went there, just to help you, there is this statue in lower Manhattan of a man stitching the clothes. So did you understand now where all the garment factories are now today? Okay, I got it. So, about 4 million people by now are employed in the garment factory. Did I tell you what the puck is? And where the puck is going to be? What I'm telling you is that 4 million people working. It is amazing because what it does, it is generates $22 billion a year. Today for Bangladesh, it's about 100% run by system. Almost 100%. Do you understand what I just established? So, the puck is, and where the puck is going to be, is about the same. With that being said, I know I have to establish a few things that I promised to Brother Fazelahi. Let's get some Bangladesh facts very quickly. Bangladesh is a heaven for NGOs. NGOs means non-government organization. They are, whether you like it or not, are led by mostly secularists in Bangladesh who cherish and maintain that Bangladesh should be Islamized if it's possible as a solution to the misery that this group of people are having. I want you to understand that. Today in Bangladesh, in every square mile, there is 2.6 NGOs. Did you understand what I just said? For every one square mile, in Bangladesh, there's 2.6 such NGOs. Do you get that fact? Okay, next slide. Most of the NGOs are operated by the evangelicals, whose only goal is conversions. With that said, I want to tell you a little bit. Most importantly, there are too few Islamic institutional organizations in Bangladesh. For the most part, Islamic efforts are small, and mostly focused on short-term solutions. When Nabi set out for itself, this was understood that yes, when the time of emergency will come, we would go and run, but that's not our primary objective. Our primary objective is to change life for a longer period of time. So remember, I'm not asking you to not give for Rohingyas or anything, I'm only saying Nabi, for last 25 plus years, is interested in long-term investment that will change the life. So, if you look at Earth from the moon, this is how the Earth looks like. And if the world had only 100 people, 80 people of the 100 people will live in substandard housing. 67 will not be able to read. 50 will be malnourished. One will die of starvation. 33 would have no safe water. 39 people would have no sanitation. 24 would have no electricity. And most of the 76 with the electricity use it only for the light of the night. If the world had 100 people, seven would have an access to the internet. One has a college education. One has HIV. Two are going to die at near birth and one near death. Five of the hundred people control 32% of the wealth of the world. Did you understand what I just said? Five of the hundred people will control 32% of the entire wealth. And of those five, all five lives in America. So, there are 33 attempts to live on Earth on 3% of global income. So, I'm setting you up, your place in the world. If you make $50,000 a year, you are top 1% in the world, and I'm not making it up. If you make $40,000 per year, you are top 3% in the world. If you have $30,000 per year, you are the top 7% in the world. If you make $20,000, you are top 10% in the world. So, 
What am I doing? Why am I doing this? It is more one. It is one tenth of the total Muslim woman lives there. One tenth. It's 165 million. Is that our population? And our worldwide Muslim population is about 1.6 to 1.7 billion. That's 10 percent. If you help any one of them, you are actually helping 10 percent. And what I want to tell you, time is indeed right. It's my message that I got every morning. I want to just take you very quickly through why I think the time is right. Now, each sector has been described, and I'm not going to repeat any of that, and the video that will follow. But most importantly, that I always uh, stress tremendous, massive entrepreneurship and innovation is underway in Bangladesh. You are not investing in something that is going to fail. You are going to invest in something where people are motivated to change themselves. And so, just a few slides. United States projects were listed, and I'm not going to spend my time with a scholarship in Memphis, Halal Mumbai Food Head Pantry, meat packaging projects, remember, where the puck is and where the puck will be. They're all connected. That's the focus for an army. And I'm only just stressing this point. And the reason I see is tremendous entrepreneurship. This is an American contribution in Bangladesh. Did you see that? You want Kentucky Fried Chicken in Bangladesh. It's actually a Kabir Food Center. It's right in front of Jahangir University. They don't sell any chicken, by the way. It's only biryani and everything else is sold there. And it, by the way, if you, you want to have MacGyver Saloon hairdresser, these are all American contributions. I just want to share two or three more slides just for you. Look at this. This is American entrepreneurship. Fish on sale. change Look at the next one. Ekhane khati goru dul or dim. You think goru dim as Khati goru dul or dim. Khuchra ebon pai kari pikre kara hai. Ebon ice cream o pao hai. This is called entrepreneurship. And I'm telling you in Bangladesh, throughout, I travel in Bangladesh tremendously. And if God gives me like, first week of January, I'm going to take more of these pictures. Like, this is what is going on in Bangladesh. Now, let's next slide. This is motorization. I know I've shared this picture, but please follow me. There is this bicycle, which is connected to a tube well. And the water comes out of that, goes to a bottom now. Is that true? Is that true? It goes to a bottom now. You are not going to have this anywhere in the world. It's only in Bangladesh. These are possible. It does not require a PhD. You don't have an engineer. It is ordinary people that really need to change life. Look at the next one. This is from Dolai Kalbi Ghani Shamsa. This motorcycle is completely brand new. It's made by wooden blocks. Nowhere else in the world they could create this. Next slide. I want to pause a little bit because tonight this is not an Abhi thing, but I'm heavily invested in It's not an Abhi project, but I brag about it because for the last 15 years I worked on a project which is called Mac Olympia. This picture was taken only last October in front of St. Gregory's High School. This is opening day of Mac Olympia. Do you know what Mac Olympia is? These people are ready to take the world. Not about anything but by math. It's math fight. Now you may say, by the way, I've been going 15 years. Every time December, January, I spend a lot of time with this group, and I walk through these kids. I talk to these kids. The amount of things that I've learned from those kids, I wish I was thinking like them when I was growing up. That is not the case. I heard from them and their supervisor that someday we are going to win film prize in mathematics. Do you know what film prize is? Mathematics has no, no Nobel Prize. Is the film price, the highest price to be won. 15 years in this process. That's in front of that. So each time I go right now, currently in Bangladesh, about 100,000 kids compete in this fight. So, next slide. Last year, when they came back, on the 58th Math Olympia, we did win bronze and silver. It took 16 years to get. Ah. I'm going next 
January it took, and I helped in the logistic this. Now, this is for the, this year's Gumit Ucha, 2017. Same thing. They would like to win bronze, and they would like to win silver. All I'm asking tonight, it is not a place that you can give up on. These people are focused if you provide the environment right. The next slide. When you take a survey of the young people in Bangladesh, this was done last 2016. It was done in the month of November. 75% of the young kids believe that there's a prosperous future. And 13% people see no major change. 12% sees a less prosperous nation. Next slide that I have, the brother is going to play something. This is a clip from World Bank. I want you to know, this is our case. Can you go and play this? Uh, then let's see, just a minute. I will remind you, the family that will remind you, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tonight, that he asked for four maps to remember of your life before you have lived it. Of your youth, how, what he did with it. Of his wealth, what you did and how you earn and how you spend it. And of his knowledge, what he did with it. And next step, there are five things we ask to remember. Your youth before you are old. Your health before you are sick. Your richness before you are poor. And your free time before you become busy. Your life before you are dead. Last slide I have for you. The brother is going to pay this. This is from World Bank. Can you please the sounds? This is our case. QC Pro, a portable quality control device to measure moisture content, temperature, pH level, and humidity of milk and other. fabricated by our young folks. Picked up from about 3,000 such projects that competed worldwide. Young people, enterprising, have gone to school. Type of equipment, microprocessor, machines, algorithm, software, hardware, farmware, multimedia, network, they understand it, comprehend it. I wanted to share with you, I know you didn't see it, but I want to tell you something. I will quit, and I'm a big talker. I will quit after this. It is not a place that has no hope. It is people that are enterprising. They can do more if you can come forward. And God has put a space of where the park is going to be, and that's where the park is. And believe me, as I try to tell you, they're about the same. For 20 years, we are actually part of the same country. Thank you very much, and I hope the next person is going to take one from here. Thank you.